Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, just so you know, this uh, call is recorded and likely will be published uh, in the future. Uh, just like uh, the previous ones were also published. Um, I don't think we have any kind of agenda today, but feel free to ask any kind of questions and we'll try to answer them as we can. Um, just mention your name and, and ask as many questions as you want. Hey there, my name is Dan Ellison and um, I'd just like to know the fastest way to get up to speed or get a development environment going uh, for EWASM. Anybody else wants to jump in? Okay, I, I guess the, the first question is, uh, what kind of language uh, you're interested in? Um, well, I'm actually interested in the, uh, the, the WebAssembly text format, most of all, not surprisingly, I guess. Um, I'd like to build a, a, a thin language on top of that uh, that can compile to uh, EWASM. Um, so actually, let me just try to find it. And there are a couple of languages uh, like that already, uh, which try to be a, a tiny layer layer over the, the uh, WebAssembly text format. Well, that would be and great. Maybe it's better to extend those. Yeah. Um, I think we'll just post it into the EWASM lobby. Oh, it's called. I see it now, thank you. Yeah, there, there are a couple of them. Some of them are maintained, some are less maintained. Uh, I think there are at least like two which try to achieve the same thing. Okay, I'll, I'll um, definitely take a look. Now on top of that, we have a, on the EWASM slash testnet repo, we have most of the user facing documentation, uh, which okay. includes how to compile Solidity and how to deploy it, how to compile other languages like C or Rust. Okay. Uh, it also has detail regarding connecting to the testnet and running a node. Uh, it has one section which is missing, but we have an issue for, for that section, uh, which explains how to uh, deploy a contract uh, a WASM contract um, because it needs to be wrapped into this deploy stage. And we have a tool called EWASM Studio, uh, which is a, a website to do that. Uh, or there's also a, another tool 
written in Rust, which is a common line tool uh, to wrap a binary into a deployable binary. Um, oh, cool. And so we're going to add the description to the testnet repo, um, mm -hmm. hopefully before Monday. OK, great. So the thing that wraps the uh, deploying binary, is it similar to the way the old uh, smart contracts were constructed, sort of like you've got this wrapper that sends, that returns the uh, binary that needs to be deployed? Uh, yes, that's correct. It's okay. uh, the same process. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you for that information. Uh, I'm also giving you the link uh, for the issue uh, which tracks uh, addition of this to the documentation. Uh, and I believe uh, we don't have Paul on the call, uh, but Paul has uh, written the, the WRC20 WRC. challenge in handwritten in WebAssembly text. Yes, I've seen that. It's uh, quite something. Yeah, probably that's the, I don't have the link uh, handy, but probably that's the best way to start. I think so too. Um, it seems like the uh, ERC20 uh, standard is becoming a standard for uh, examples of, examples of uh, I guess, contract uh, system Compatibility, not compatibility, but um, saying this is how uh, the contract, this is what the contract should produce. I, I didn't say that right, of course, but, <laughs> but it's sort of like an example contract these days. Yeah, that, that was the, the goal of it, to, to have something fairly simple uh, yet useful yeah and to, to see how it can be done with in with various languages yeah uh, targeting it wasn't But yeah, Hugo has posted the link uh, to Paul's uh, handwritten WebAssembly text on the channel. Thank you, I see that. Yeah, who, who joined just right now, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we don't have any agenda. Um, and I think Daniel's question was just answered right now. So we open for any new questions. Yeah, hi, this is Achala from KIP Foundation. Yeah, I just wanted to know how the WASM chisel will work. Like I tried to deploy some uh, REST contact that is WRC contact. I got from the WRC link, but I'm getting the create error. Just I try to add the, uh, the wasm chisel in my TOML. So how can I fix those issues? I'm sorry, I didn't fully get it, but I think I've seen uh, um, the, the, the work you guys were doing. Um, what is the, the, the exact problem you're facing with the, the wasm chisel? Uh, like I, 
try to add the dependent the uh, vessel chisel package in my tomel can i do like that um yes you could but right now probably the easier way to use it uh, by installing it as a command line tool um, and just using the command line version of it uh, so you can just can do use using command line um, so you just run cargo install uh, chisel on the command line. Yeah, I um, tried, but. And then if, if you did that, then you should be able to run chisel on the command line and it should it should work. No, it's, it's not working for me. So I tried to add the package in my Tomel, but it is giving the create error. Yeah, I think, I think it will be easier to resolve this if you uh, write it down to the channel and probably it's easier, more interactive to, to write it in text. Um, maybe just write down the, the comments you have used and what system you're using. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Can you explain, Alex, what exactly is Chisel doing? Um, yes, one second. Um, so, Achala, I, if I pronounce your name correctly, I, um, I posted the, the command I used. And at least on a Mac, it seems to be working. Uh, but just please write down what you, uh, how you try to use it. Yeah, sure. Okay, regarding the, uh, what Chisel or Wasm Chisel is, um, it is, first of all, library, uh, implementing a couple of, uh, uh, smaller transformation and validation steps uh, on WebAssembly in general, not related to eWASM only, uh, but it does have some steps, uh, transformation steps or validation steps specific to eWASM. Um, and secondly, it also has a command line tool uh, which, which uses this library. And the command line tool will have two ways to, to use it. One way is uh, just run it uh, on a given file and specify this step to be done. Um, and the other option, which isn't implemented yet, to have a configuration file. And in a configuration file, one can specify a path uh, pointing to a WASM bytecode and different steps can be then defined uh, for that given bytecode. Um, to explain what these steps could be or what these steps are, um, as an example, one transformation step uh, we already have implemented now is uh, fixing the import statements uh, in WebAssembly to match what it wasn't requires. Um, now, imports in WebAssembly are uh, two level. Um, the first level is the actual name of the import. And eWASM itself requires that the namespace is called Ethereum. And the imports are such as use gas, uh, get call data, um, external code copy, etc. Uh, but most of the languages, uh, most of the general purpose languages, uh, which can be compared to WebAssembly, don't have an option to specify a namespace. And instead, they just use a single namespace called ENV. <clears throat> um, and that means compiling most of these. Uh, uh, using most of these languages will result in a bytecode which cannot be used on eWASM without any changes. And Chisel should uh, make this fairly simple because it has a step uh, to translate these, uh, uh, so to say, wrong imports to the right ones. Um, apart from transformations, it also has validation. Um, and one of the validation Sorry, my, my internet cut off. 
Um, so one of the validation steps uh, it is doing, um, it, it validates that a bytecode has all the correct imports, it doesn't use floating point, etc. Uh, so eventually it, uh, this uh, wasm chooser library is also used in the in the Sentinel contract, which is a key part of the wasm. Um, I don't know if, if you have any more specific questions about what uh, Wasm Chisel is doing um, or any of this was uh, good enough as an explanation. Yeah, it was perfect. So Alex, uh, once you run this uh, Wasm Chisel tool on a Wasm binary, uh, what will be like the next step to deploying this contract to the to the Wasm testnet? Um, so one transformation we actually have implemented is uh, doing the deployment um, in Chisel. Um, so it, this transformation just takes the Wasm bytecode as an input and wraps it into this uh, deployment stage. Um, unfortunately, this is not enabled in the command line yet, so it cannot be used yet. But soon it should be there and and when that is released that means one can take any wasm byte code compiled by any general purpose language and it can translate this byte code into uh, fully uh, uh, fully working it wasn't byte code and other important step it will support is uh, removing unwanted data uh, from the byte code um, such as unused functions um, or unused, um, you know, like standard library functions. And in the future, it should also be uh, possible to replace um, some uh, fairly commonly used uh, implementations of memcopy, memset, etc., with a more optimized version and or use system libraries in eWASM to, to provide that functionality. Um, so eventually in the future, it should not only help in generating working bytecode, but also generate a more optimized bytecode. Okay, thank you. Hi, so I was wondering about the gas limit, like what's like planned, planned to be the gas limit for like if we get a version of Ethereum that uses EVASM. Seems like the EVASM instructions, they are like more simple than EVM, so probably the gas limit will be larger. Well, I think it's it's too early to to say anything about this. Uh, so I think it's 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 much more complex that than just uh, changing the 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 overall block gas limit. As you may know, there's like lots of <coughs> discussions and and work into, for example, separating cost for storage from computation and like how to limit the, the Ethereum state uh, inflation from the computational cost, which is, which is not stored anywhere. So if that can be solved, uh, even for, for current Ethereum, blockchain we can increase the block limit for compute uh, the gas limit for computations and for for web assembly that would be proportionally i think so depending how performant it is in most cases uh we can just 
uh, bring it up or like make the the computation cheaper accordingly. I have to get going, but thanks for this, uh, everyone. Uh, if I have any more questions, I'll put them in the uh, the Gitter channel. Thank you, Daniel. Yep. See you next time. See you next time. Bye bye. Okay. We we only planned for twenty minutes, um, but if um, this also a new person who joined me in a while, uh, Clive, if I pronounce it properly. Um, if you guys have any other questions, I think we can stay another like seven minutes to make it 30 minutes in total. All right, then I think we will hang up in that case. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today. Um, there were great questions and hope to talk to you soon at the next call. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, there's a chat message. Oh, thank you, yeah. All right, see you then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.